Most of us don't need 10, 20 people. We just need one or two that can make all of the difference. Before we, we dive into some of the specifics, look, you know, it's it's a difficult climate out there. We, we all know that. Even if you are in a difficult place, a difficult climate, you know, most of us don't need 10, 20 people. We just need one or two that can make all of the difference. So that's how I want you to think about this going in. We just need to attract one or two. We don't need to attract everyone. So like I said, we're, we're talking about uh, hiring and recruiting. This always starts with having a hiring process. I know this seems basic and I can promise you nothing I share with you today is going to be this mind blowing, earth shattering thing because we're all human beings and human beings attract to certain things. And for business owners, having a hiring process is key because I know when I first started hiring and I was struggling in my own uh, practice in, in physical therapy, I didn't have a process. I mean, I had a loose kind of sort of type of thing, but I didn't have an organized process. And a process is so key because a process helps slow you down and helps stay in an organized fashion. It doesn't allow the emotion of hiring. And believe me, there is emotion with all of this. Doesn't allow that emotion to take over because when emotion is high, intelligence is low. And in this case, hiring people and making decisions around very key people in your business can be uh, negatively affected. So let me just share with you a hiring process that I've used over the years that I teach to many of our clients, if not all of our clients. Um, and these are the different areas that I'm gonna share with you today. So a very simple hiring process goes like this. The first part is recruiting. Recruiting is getting your job ad, getting the word out to your candidates that you are actually looking for someone to join your team. The second part is qualify. Qualify is another word for interview process, but I like the word qualify. Qualify just has that word that we're gonna qualify to make sure they're a right fit for us. Yes, there's pretty much uh, uh, 10, 10 job opportunities for every one candidate. But again, not having the right person come into your place can wreak havoc. And we'll talk more about that in, in a few minutes. And then the third uh, part of this process is onboarding. Onboarding is a key factor. Onboarding can include things like, you know, payroll and signing all the key forms that they need to sign and, and getting their name tag and getting their email address and all those other things that they need to be an employee. I look at onboarding as kind of like the HR part of your company. You know, if you work for a bigger company and they have an HR department, every single person at the company goes through the onboarding aspect of it. However, what then separates that person is the fourth part here, and that's training. Training is part of the hiring process. Uh, and training, I, I, I may say, is one of the most important aspects of the hiring process. Training is about training them specifically to the job in which they're hired. There's a saying out there that says, hire slow, fire fast. Unfortunately, from my experience and having done this 25 plus years in the PT uh, physical therapy world, let alone coaching clients, I can say with a surety that people do the opposite. <laughs> they hire fast and they fire or let go very, very slowly. Typically, we hire fast because we hire out of someone that unexpectedly leaves. Whatever the reason they're leaving, it creates a sense of desperation to having to fill that void. And it's something to be mindful of when that happens. Because if you do not have some sort of process in place, 
We can be very reactive and quick in our decisions. So this hiring process alone, just having one, doesn't mean if it's great or not, just having one that has at least these four components. Some people say there might be a fifth component, but I like to use these four, help slow you down. The first, do. So we're under the idea of uh, recruiting. And the first do is creating intrigue. What do I mean by that? So the first place you absolutely want to start is with your job ad. Now, if you're like me, my first job ad, maybe my second and third, was I got it off of Indeed. And I got it off of Indeed from another place with their job ad. And because I like to make a lot of mistakes and make this painfully hard on myself, I got it from a hospital system. Like my little private practice was somehow related to a hospital, but my thinking was, well, they must know what they're doing, right? They're a big hospital system. They got really smart people. So I'll just literally grab their ad, put my name on it, and I'll post that. And yes, I know what you're thinking. It did not work very well. Um, but that's how many of us get our job ads. We just look around, see what everyone else is doing. Maybe we're on some Facebook group. We're like, hey, would you mind sharing your ad? And, and we basically just copy and paste the ad. And yet there is 10 job offers for every one person looking. The way to stand out is not having the same ad as everybody else. You wanna have an ad that does one thing better than anyone else's ad. And that is grab attention. Yes, your job as is a sales letter. I said it, I said it, it's a sales letter. Because you in fact are selling this person to work for you, assuming they're the right fit, but you're at least selling them to submit a resume. That is all your job ad is doing, is submitting a resume. So we need to grab their attention. How do you do that? There's a couple examples. One, you ask an intriguing question. What's an intriguing question? You could ask a question around something that is concerning to them, something that is worrisome to them, something that is important to them. It could be, are you tired being unappreciated and kept down from advancing into your professional career? Something like that. Um, in other words, you're tapping into they're unappreciated at their current job and they're not able to grow in their current job. So um, are, you, are you still at the same staff position and you're looking for upward growth into management and being a clinical director? That's intriguing to the person that is interested in that, especially if you're looking for a clinical director. Here's another example. This would be for a new grad. Are you a new grad ready to embark on a professional career? Are you looking for a place who believes in mentoring and molding young leaders? What does this say? This is going after a specific new grad person, because this isn't gonna make sense necessarily for someone 10 years out. So you wanna make sure your ad is hitting on the person you're looking for. And if you're asking the question, well, Jamie, should I have more than one ad if I'm looking for more than one position? The answer is yes, absolutely. If you're looking for a new grad, have a new grad ad. If you're looking for someone more senior, have a senior ad. If you're looking for a director, have a director ad. Don't be lazy and have one ad fits all of them because you're capturing attention differently. This is gonna capture a new grad's attention. Why? A new grad wants mentoring. That's at least one thing they want. They may want other things. So there's lots of things you can do here. You wanna play with it. We won't get into all this, the details of how to create this, but I'll, I'll show you something that you can do later that will help you. But just 
This is the key to the ad, because if no one reads your ad, it doesn't matter. If they start reading the ad, because you are intriguing them right at that first line or two, there's more likely they'll read the rest of the ad of what you're about. All right, now that is the do. Let's get with the don't. The don't is don't be vague. Being vague is pretty much what my ad was about. It said the same old bullshit, the same old, we are a growing place and we believe in quality care and we're this and we're that, yada, 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 yada. Well, everybody else is saying the same general stuff. But what is specific about your place? What is, let me share a quick story. So I had a client who needed three SLPs, speech and language people, three. And they were looking for weeks and weeks and weeks, basically, basically months. And what I, when I asked them to do, I said, be really specific, not just capturing attention, which they did, be specific in the type of person that would do well at your place. And they were like, well, like, what do you mean? I go, do you have values? And they went, yeah, we have values. Put your values in there. Say things like, you know, our ideal candidate values um, being part of a team that uh, is fun, being part of a team that goes above and beyond for patients, being part of a team that believes in accelerating and advancing the uh, speech and language profession. So it's whatever your values are. So what you're doing is you're creating a line, you're drawing a line in the sand within your ad. You're saying, this is what we're about. And if you resonate with this, then the next step is send your resume. But here's the beautiful part, and tell me if this makes sense to you. You're also saying, hey, if this is not what you're about, please do not apply. Don't waste my time and don't waste yours. Think about that. You are actually reducing potentially the number of applicants. And I believe it's quality, not quantity. Some people may disagree with me. If they do, fine, they can disagree all they want. But I rather qualify people so that I know if someone sends a resume, they've connected and resonated with my message. So don't be vague. Oh, and by the way, when Susan and Carla did this, they got two people in less than 10 days. Two people in less than 10 days. And, the, and when they asked, so what resonated with you, you know, cause that's one of the interviewing questions we'll talk about in a minute. What resonated with you, they said, you're at. You actually said specifically the type of person that would do well and I agreed with that. I mean, that's powerful stuff. Okay. Let's go to the next one. 